We used to do everything by hand. Manufacturing was primitive. Things have evolved over time. Now we can do 3D printing and make plastic models of these difficult cases. I use the technology to define anatomy. We take that technology and then take it one step further. At Hospital for Special Surgery, the next wave of 3D printing, it's printing implants that will go into the patient. For surgeons, I've often said this, they think with their hands. I can show them imaging on a computer screen of a patient's anatomy, but there's nothing like being able to hold it in your hand, and they can spin it around and think through the surgical procedure. I used to do a lot of the more challenging cases that had very complex deformities. And I said I was able to do them not because I was a better surgeon, but because I was a better planner. You can actually prepare this plastic bone as a rehearsal of the procedure itself. The ability to plan for these tough cases has really been revolutionized by the advent of 3D printing models. It helps make sure that we're doing the right things and getting the right fit. I use 3D printing to look at the geometry and the bony anatomy of my patients who are undergoing hip and knee replacements. A patient will come and see me. They have a complex anatomical problem around their hip or knee. We will send them for a detailed CAT scan and then our bioengineers take that data and put it in a 3D printer and they will print up the bony anatomy as it is. Once you have it in front of you, it can be obvious by looking at the anatomy that off-the-shelf implants aren't going to work. We need to go to a patient-specific implant. Lima's collaboration with HSS I think is a perfect marriage. They actually have 3D printers in-house at the hospital that we can use to print metal implants for our patients. The advantage is twofold. One is speed. The second less obvious benefit is as the surgeons become more familiar with 3D printing technology, that's going to spark new ideas which will generate newer innovative implants for the next generation of patients. We know that certain surfaces are very conducive for bone ingrowth. They have to be porous. We have to know exactly the geometry that is favorable and the depth that that surface needs to be. That is very hard to put onto a traditionally manufactured block of metal. I think the new porous surfaces will dramatically increase the chance of these implants being secured fast and strong to the bone. Bringing in 3D printing is really going to help. We used to be restricted by the manufacturing, whereas now we really have no restrictions in how they manufacture, what shapes they can make. I had a case once where it was a 16-year-old child, he had a dysplastic hip, the hip wasn't in the socket, he'd had multiple surgeries, the bone was quite deformed. We actually did our initial plan on the screen. Dr. Figgy said, no, if I do it that way, that's going to cause some problems. Let's rethink this. We actually did a couple trial iterations using the 3D printed models and figured out where we had to cut the bone, how we had to fit the implant. Fortunately, we were able to successfully do a surgery and it made a huge difference for him. But that's one where I didn't get much sleep the night before because it was a very complicated case in a young patient. Trying to plan this out without the 3D model would have been really challenging and I'm not sure it would have gone as smoothly during the surgeries as it did without it. I think the next step will be that we have routine cases where some enhanced radiograph technique will be used to decide on not only the size of the implant, but also exactly where we should put that implant. 3D printing helps us plan, but then in the operating room, you've got to figure out, okay, I've made the cut at this point on the plastic model. Where is it on the actual patient and what angle is it at? I think if we can get technology to help us reproduce those cuts perfectly, that would be a huge step for us.